Hello everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Last video we got all the way up to Death Mountain and we are now in our second dungeon which is going to be the Goron Mines. For those of you who have played this game, uh, let me know if you liked this dungeon because I personally hate this dungeon. I have zero patience for this, uh, you know, waiting for lava and the timing of some of these puzzles and I just, this, this temple really frustrates me so um, excuse me while I complain a little bit. Overall, though, it's not too difficult, so I shouldn't complain too much. Now, you're gonna need your iron boots for these switches here to weigh them down in order to be able to pass certain obstacles like those. And they are timed, so you need to listen for the uh, timing sound. I was trying to do this in uh, practice, and I had my sound turned off, which wasn't a very smart idea because I couldn't hear what the heck was going on. Alright, second switch. This one threw me off at first. What you're going to need to do is, of course, go ahead, turn off that vent, and then kind of turn around and get the ladder. It's kind of misleading because there is um, an area you can go towards, but it's not going to lead you towards anything. It's actually just going to uh, lead you over there, which is essentially a huge waste of time. So don't do that. Alrighty. Take care of these guys. And there's going to be a chest with 20 rupees in it. At the very least, this dungeon is uh, suiting to the area, which I guess is nice. Obviously, um, makes sense. Fiery place, Death Mountain, Gorons, all that good stuff. So, now that we have that, let's go across this island. I'm just trying to be very careful because I really don't want to fall. Um, I'm going to take care of the enemy on the roof first because um, what he will do is he'll come off the roof and he'll knock you over. Um, this next part you want to do in one straight shot. And when I was doing practice, I failed to do that and I was pretty frustrated because I kept getting knocked out in the lava and I kept having to like redo this room over again. And it was an absolute nightmare, so let's not repeat that. Uh, you, you can probably avoid the enemies, but knowing me, I would definitely screw that up anyway, so I just chose to take care of them. And there we go. I also don't find this, this temple very fun. This is pretty much all you're going to be seeing is a lot of this sort of climate. It's not even like a aesthetically pleasing dungeon in my opinion, but... Excuse me while I complain, I'm very sorry. Hopefully this place won't take me as long as the forest temple, although it's probably going to take around the same amount of time. And for some reason I just cannot uh, hit those enemies for the life of me. Now luckily I don't have my, my Orden shield equipped because I would have already burnt that by now, I'm sure. Knowing me. And in this room we get a pan out of this particular device which we will need to activate for later. It's blue and glowing, that's rather interesting. Alright, uh, in the Wii version you're gonna wanna go left, in the GameCube version you're gonna wanna go right, and whichever way you go, whichever version you're playing, you're gonna need this key in this chest, which is our small key. So I need to be opening that up, obviously, on the left-hand side in the GameCube version and vice versa in the Wii version. Which uh, will get complicating after a while. I'll, I'll try not to um, confuse people too much because I know I can get confusing. The, the guide I was using to just kind of walk me through the practice of this area when I was stuck was a Wii version of the game. So I, would, I went up to the left first when I was practicing and I was like, this guide is wrong, but it's not, it's just following the Wii version, so you gotta be really careful about that kind of stuff. Now that we have that key though, what we can do is time our jumps very carefully, which is something I'm not good at, and go to the other side. Okay, there we go. We're making pretty good headway in this dungeon already, if I do say so myself. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. And we end up failing a lot. I, 
do like the noise Link makes when he walks across metal grating, though. I've always liked that. Like, the, they've done that in other Zelda games, too, but for some reason, I just like that. I don't know, it just seemed really realistic and stuff. These, I'm assuming, are like Dodongos. So get out of their way when they breathe on you and then hit their tails. If I can hit their tails, that would be awesome. And they actually have quite a bit of stamina, it seems like. Uh, it takes quite a few hit slashes to the tail for them to kind of keel over, but... Again, it's probably just worth your time to take them out. And here, of course we need to time our jumps. Um, why am I slipping? Okay, I felt like I was glitched in place there. I was trying to, to jump and it was like slipping for some reason, although I was clearly on the platform. That was weird. Whatever. Take care of this to Dongo. Thank you. And... Continue on to the other side. Alright. One more to Dongo, because, you know, they, they can't give us any other enemy. God forbid. They just gotta give us this crap over and over again. Although, each temple seems to have its own set of enemies, of course. We run into those stupid man-eating flowers that would not leave me alone in the forest temple. Those were a joy. So hopefully these guys will be a little easier on me. You need to grab this chain. You don't need your iron boots for this. However, this does require a little bit of timing. You're going to need to drag this. And in the background, you'll see that the fire is going up and down. Um, when it's going up like that, that will indicate that the fire is up. And as soon as it goes down, you're going to want to run so you can time this correctly. Because uh, what this is going to do is it's going to open this gate. But if you take too long, it's going to close. And so you need to time your jumps across that fire pit very carefully. Hey, more of that, uh, that blue stuff from earlier. It's kind of all over the place. That's really interesting. And there's also water. You don't see that every day. Now, Link can't dive in this game. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is put on your boots to weigh yourself down and immediately step on the switch because we don't have a tunic that allows us to breathe underwater yet. And although I find this aspect of the dungeon interesting, uh, it makes you move very, very slowly. However, all of these blue sections in this dungeon, uh, we can put on our iron boots and it acts as a magnet, which will allow us to walk on walls and on the roof and stuff, which is kind of cool. And that's kind of the whole premise for this dungeon, which is, like I said, very, very unique. Oh, hi, Mr. Goron, with a volcano smoking back. How are you? Ah, I thought I felt a presence, but what a surprise to find a young human. Word has come to me of you, and if Gor Goron has faith in you, then your heart must be true. I am one of the four Goron elders. Gor Amoto is my name. You are a heroic young human. Please, you must lend this tribe your power. And we get a key shard. You will need three shards to return the big key to its original shape. And this is another uh, very unique aspect of this dungeon, by the way. That is one of the key shards that, when merged together, form the key to the room where Darvis is being held. Here's our patriarch. The key is split into three pieces. Each of us elders keeps a piece. You must hurry to the other elders. So this is one of this is the only dungeon in the game that doesn't uh, require you to get the quote unquote big key. You need to put all three pieces together to get um, the big key towards the boss room. So you just got to keep that in mind. Of course, we get the dungeon map. No surprise there. So it is required to meet with all of the elders because if you don't, you won't be able to finish up um, the dungeon. And um, Gorokoran also kind of mentioned that, like, when we came here, we had to keep an eye out for the elders because they were watching over um, the mines while we waited, or while they were waiting for Darvis to kind of calm down, so. I think we only need three pieces, though, if I do remember correctly, and if not, then we'll find out. Oh god, that pot's moving. Is that who I think it is? Yes, yes it is. Whew! Free at last! Gracious! You're that nice fellow who helped me out the other day! How nice to see you again! Well, now that we've found each other again, let's stick together for a bit. Hmm? I'll be right with you, so if you want to warp out, just let me know. 
And of course we get Uku. I did forget to mention that you do get her every dungeon. So just keep that in mind too. I, I don't know, I was too busy being freaked out by how weird she is to kind of realize uh, that I failed to mention that. But again, just like last time, we can use her to warp out if we want. Of course here we need to walk across. Um, like I said, this just, this is the main reason I was really dreading uh, doing this dungeon is because this walking takes so long. I'll probably like speed it up and put some sort of like waiting music over it, like the Jeopardy theme song or something, because that's just going to be torturous for you guys to watch after a while, and I completely understand that. Um, because there are a lot of sections in this dungeon that are just very, very long to watch me walk across, so... Alright, now for the next part, we get to walk on the roof. Alright, so, like I said, this is one of these sections that is very, 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 very long to uh, try and walk across. Now, there's going to be two ways to go. There's going to be a piece of heart up here somewhere, and there's also going to be an exit. So I think the piece of heart is over here, on the, I guess, northwestern part of the map, it looks like. So I'll go ahead and drop down safely and get this chest. And there we go, another piece of heart. We only need one more for another car container, so we're not doing too bad, uh, really. And then I think that's about it on the roof, and then we can just kind of continue onwards towards our next destination, which I think is the northeast. I do, however, um, also kind of like that they kind of made Link upside down and kind of like made the controls a little bit more difficult for you uh, in a way too. It kind of makes it look more realistic, like, you know, if they were to fling you on the roof and then flip you upwards, that just really wouldn't make a lot of sense. Okay, so we need to take out these guys, of course. Because I do believe that, that they can knock you off, and you really don't want that to happen. That would be such a pain in the arse. Alright. And now I think the point comes where I should probably just uh, go ahead and speed this up. I mean, I'm not going to be doing anything too crazy, and I think, like I said, we've already pretty much collected what we need to collect. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, walk and speed this up. I'm almost there, so I might stop speeding it up now, but when you get close to these enemies when they flare up, that usually indicates that you can either A, hit them, or they're close and they're going to knock you off, so uh, be wary of that. If you do fall down to the wrong area, you're going to have to backtrack, um, so you got to just be really careful where you're going, because I've done that. Um, I fell in the wrong area. I actually fell into the room below me, uh, down here where we were originally with the gate, and I had to go all the way through the Goron Elder's room and back up here, and it was a huge pain. So be on the lookout for those torches to know where you're going. All right, and we're now in a new room, surrounded by lots of archers and all sorts of wonderful stuff. All right. Let's go ahead and go towards that switch. The game seems to want to tell us something. Take care of these guys, of course. Easy enemy to just go ahead and take out. They kind of also seem oblivious of our uh, presence, although we were just destroying all of their comrades. You, you would think if your comrades were being slain beside you, you would kind of notice, but apparently, you know, that is not something that these guys are apparent to, so push that switch and you'll see now that the magnet from earlier uh, is now able to rotate around. So, very interesting. So now you will be able to move around uh, various parts. This is the same room we entered earlier except it's on a higher part uh, to move around the dungeon. So if you have, I think that's more or less if you have to leave the dungeon. Um, you can come up here a lot easier and then go to the next area a lot easier as well without having to do um, all of that backtracking, which is actually uh, pretty nice, I do have to say. So that's where we came in. 
Looks like we have no other choice but to use the magnet then to see where else we can go. Let's just go ahead and wait for our, uh, our ride. And of course, keeping in mind, I don't think this is rocket science or anything I need to tell you guys, but if you don't have your iron boots on, you won't be able to stick. And I really hope Link is not afraid of heights or anything, because this would be so scary for a person that was afraid of heights or falling or anything like that. But Link is fearless. The hero of time can't be afraid of anything like heights. That's just ridiculous. Alright. And there we go. Probably could use my boomerang on those bats, but they're not really worth my time, I don't think. And there we go, we're going to activate another magnet, and as soon as I make it up on this platform, I think I will stop the video. And uh, we made some pretty good progress, I gotta say, so it uh, feels like a pretty good stopping point before we go on into the next room. And also do keep in mind that this room here uh, is pretty much like our main room, I would say. Um, so yeah, of course just keep that in mind if you are lost or anything like that, that you can pretty much access uh, various parts of the dungeon from this room. So yes, that is all. Thank you so very much for joining me for the first part of the Goron Mines, and I hope that I will see you for part two.